speak in tongues? <laughs> this is uh, one of the questions I'm sure so many people have asked themselves. Did, did Jesus speak in tongues when he was addressing the people, when he was uh, preaching and things like that, or praying? Did he speak in tongues? Now, you see, the Bible offers no evidence um, that Jesus spoke in tongues. Many today see tongues, you know, all those things that people say, uh, those, those words, you, you understand. I, I don't speak in tongues, so I don't know. They, many today see tongues as a, some sort of unintelligible, supernatural form of speech. Biblically, the, the gift of speaking in tongues occurs when someone speaks a language he does not know in order to edify someone who does speak that language. Now, that's, that's basically speaking tongues. I speak in, let's say, I use English. I'm someone who speaks in English. But I can go to, uh, uh, I can go to Spain and uh, God gives me a tongue of the Spanish language. And I can speak to people in Spanish. Okay? Or I can go to France and God gives me a tongue or in, in, or French so that I can be able to uh, declare the word of God in, uh, if, uh, in France to French people. That's, that's basically the, the purpose of the speaking in tongues. Because the Bible tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians 14.6, it says, Now brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? So what do I profit you if I just come and say blah, 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 and, the, and then th that's it? W w what will I help you with? Because the Bible says even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, you know, musical instruments, except they give a distinction in sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or what is harped? You see, there are people in church who are just making noise. And you ask yourself, what are they saying? Are they making even any sense? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? If you say some things and then you say, oh, the Holy Spirit is telling me, ra -ba 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 -ba. now who is going to know what the Holy Spirit is saying? There must be a translator. There must be someone who can be able to, you know, there has to, it, there has to be an understanding. So likewise, you, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For you shall speak into the air. I'm sure people are wondering, are these things in the Bible? Yes, go and read the first, the whole book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. You will be able to see that sometimes we just make some vain bubblings, which uh, we don't edify anyone. We just make noise and noise and noise. And if you're speaking in tongues, you have to have a translator and things like that. So anyway, today is not about really speaking in tongues, uh, who should speak and what you should say. I'm just here to ask, uh, to, to, to check the whole story. Did Jesus speak in tongues himself? Did uh, he speak in tongues? Okay. Now, if Christ were to speak, uh, if, 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 if Christ were to speak in tongues, it would have been logical for him to do so when? <laughs> to do so at his baptism. Because that's the day when the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. So this would be the practical day when Jesus could have spoken in tongues. You remember in Mark 1.10? When Jesus was being baptized, Mark 1, verse uh, uh, 10, Mark 1, 10. Remember this? So this would be the perfect time when Jesus could have spoken in tongues, and we hear. And uh, straight away, coming out of the water, he saw the heavens open, and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, immediately that time is when Jesus could have spoken in tongues. But uh, there's no record of that. We know. We know that. But uh, that, that we have no record of Jesus speaking in tongues on this day or any other occasion. We don't have. You know, many av advocates of today's tongues, eh? many people of today's uh, tongues, advo those who advocate for speaking in tongues, they assume that Jesus must have, must have spoken in tongues at some point. And to bolster their point, they point to passages, they point to a passage here uh, in Mark 7.34. Mark 7.34. Uh, Look at this. In which Jesus looked unto heaven and with a deep sigh. You know, 
sigh, you know, that he sighed. Look, look at this. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ephrathatha, I don't know what is that. That is, he opened. So they say this sigh that he did and said uh, this Ephrathatha, I don't know what it is. That's the time that uh, Jesus was speaking in tongues. <laughs> Are you seeing that? And also we see another verse here in Mark 8, 12. Mark 8, verses 12. There's also another place where they say, Ah, oh, I'm sure Jesus spoke here in tongues. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and says, Why does this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, There shall no sign be given unto, he, unto this generation. He sighed deeply. So we have to ask ourselves, What is this sigh? What is sigh? Sigh is basically emitting a long, deep, audible breath, expressing sadness. It was like, ha, huh, what is this world like? These people don't, 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 they're waiting for a sign? You see, it's like you're sad, you, you, you're feeling tired or you things like that. Long, audible exhalation, exhalation expressing sadness, relief, tiredness or similar. So, Jesus sighed. You see? So people say, oh, that's the time he spoke in tongues. Mm, did he? Really? <laughs> sigh is not the same thing as supernatural gifts of tongues. Anyone can sigh for a number of reasons, but it's not proof that they have the Spirit, it's the, the Holy Spirit's power. If I, if I just get uh, from, uh, you know, from climbing a mountain and then I just arrive and I sigh, does it mean now I have the Holy Spirit? No, I don't think so. <laughs> so, we have a record of Jesus speaking um, speaking in Aramaic, uh, which was the commonest language spoken in Israel at that time, okay? Jesus, we, we, we see him speaking that because it's documented in the Bible in the book of Mark 5.41. Mark 5 verse 41 is documented. And he took... And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. So we see Jesus speaking in, uh, in, uh, in uh, th this Aramaic language. And also we see Acts 26, 14. Acts 26, verses 14. Okay. It says, and when... And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? It is, is it hard for thee? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. You see, Saul has just seen Christ. And uh, Christ has spoken to him in what? In the Hebrew tongue. Okay? So it means uh, Christ could speak all those languages because most likely he was also conversant in... Uh, both Hebrew and Greek, since both those languages were used as well. But whether or not Jesus ever spoke with the supernatural power in another language, the Bible does not say. We, we don't see any account where Jesus spoke in tongues. And if you have any place where Jesus spoke in tongues, please, please let us know. Let us know and just uh, put it in the comments below and tell us, do you know where Jesus spoke in tongues? Tell us, please. And if you don't believe the gospel yet, please believe the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. What is the gospel? The gospel is all about understanding why and how Jesus died. Why did Jesus die? Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And how did he die? He died by shedding his blood. Why? Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. The book of Hebrews tells us. And why do we have uh, to have blood shed? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11. And the Bible continues, says that I've given you the, 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 the blood to make a atonement for your souls upon the altar. So it is not just any blood which can atone for the soul. It is the blood of an innocent being. We are all sinners. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. We are supposed to die. But Jesus, 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus died for our sins. He was sinless. He was perfect. And his blood could atone for our sins. If only we believed that his death and burial and resurrection was for us. So if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried and rose again. 
All you need to do is confess to God about what you have believed in a prayer. Tell him, Jesus, I understand that you died for my sins, you were buried, and rose again, as the Bible indicates. And today I receive the atonement and payment of sin that you gave for me at the cross today by faith. When you do that, my friends, you're saved. You're saved 100% and you're going to heaven. Sealed and sanctified unto the day of redemption. God bless you. Hope, hope this has been a nine opener to you. Hope it has blessed you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can share the video to others so that they can be able to understand the word of God. And also, you can subscribe to watch more videos which we post every day. Every day we post four videos. Four videos. 6 p.m., 8 p.m., 10 p.m., and 12 a.m. East African time. God bless you and have a blessed time. Down in the description we have other links of other channels that uh, we also preach. Please go and check them out and share to other friends also. God bless you.